what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Nursing Uncharted, the podcast that discovers uncharted territory within your nursing practice. I'm Maggie Reichardt. I'm a full-time medical ICU nurse and your host for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening to us today. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nursing Uncharted or follow us on Instagram at AMN Nurse. We have snippets of the episode on there. If you like what you do and feel like you could be a good ambassador for your specialty, send me an email at nursinguncharted at amnhealthcare.com and let's talk. This episode is sponsored by AMN Passport. AMN Passport is a highly rated travel nursing app that helps you find, book, and manage travel assignments all from your phone, which puts you in the fast track towards your next travel assignment. So if you're in the market for a travel assignment, be sure to check that out. So today we're talking about nurse entrepreneurship. Have you ever thought about creating some type of products that would make your workday easier or that would solve a big problem within your practice? I'm sitting down with someone who did and uh, did something about it. Today we're talking to Adam Benuelos. Adam is a pediatric emergency room nurse who turned an entrepreneur when he recognized consistent delays in care due to failed IV attempts in infants and newborns. Adam is the co-founder and co-creator of Firefly Vein Light. It's a portable vein finder specifically for infants and newborns that nurses can carry on them at all times. Prior to nursing, he studied business marketing and worked in the wine industry as a sales and marketing account manager, which helped tremendously in this road to entrepreneurship. And we met at TravCon just recently. So thank you so much for coming on today. Well, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, this is great. Actually, I met you on the floor at TravCon. I had my daughter with me uh, yeah. and you were like, real time, you know, I yeah. have to be like, we have to, we actually tried it on her. <laughs> that was so fun. Yeah, I was caught was very great. off guard of <laughs> yeah. my baby in Vegas. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, this is the booth for her. Yeah. So I want you to, I want to just start out like talking to people, you know, about Firefly Veinlight and how it came about and just like what inspired you to create the product. Sure. Great. So um, I think it'd probably be best to kind of explain what a transluminator is um, mm -hmm. for people who maybe don't work in NICU or pediatrics. So um, a transluminator is a tool that is very common in pediatric ER and in NICUs and anywhere that you start IVs in babies as a specialty. Um, it's kind of a specialized light that will shine through the baby's hands or their feet mm -hmm. or ACs and it helps visualize the veins and really it helps assist putting IVs in. Yeah. Um, I didn't really, I guess, quite understand how uncommon this was until I started working as a travel nurse. Yeah. Um, and we'll kind of go over that. So um, I started, I'm from San Diego originally, Southern California, and worked out there as a new grad at the Children's Hospital. And mm -hmm. um, as a new grad, you know, working in Children's Hospital, I learned how to put my IVs in using transluminators. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, something you just learn. Yeah. And then when I took my first adult contract, or I guess it was technically not an adult contract, it was a... A hospital that had opened a new pediatric section to the ER, so I went there to mm -hmm. get um, some adult experience as well as kind of take over this position to help teach the staff um, mm -hmm. a lot of things about pediatrics since my specialty is pediatrics. And it was there where I realized that this technology is not very common, um, yeah. and that yeah, and that delays in care are so frequent due to missed IVs. Yeah, and uh, that's kind of what inspired me um to create a portable product that nurses can carry on them and then uh, we can go into the details of, like actually how the idea sparked because it's actually kind of interesting yeah kind of absolutely but that's, that's what a transluminator is and it's it's just a very specialized light that helps visualize veins and babies and it dramatically increases your success rate of ivs I used them once. I mean, I've always worked in adults, but I used uh, there was one assignment that they had the vein light vein light and I was like what this is like you can just see them like you could just like you don't have to feel and like yeah i mean obviously the the one the best ones are the ones that you can like you know feel but the fact that they're like there you know it just it made it it's so much easier yeah definitely and we um i don't so i don't like to market it for adults because it's a little mm -hmm. misleading um, yeah. these are very specialized tools that you'll use in kiddos typically mm -hmm. two years old and younger but okay. um, if you on our website, there's a lot of reviews and people saying they're using them in teenagers and adults. 
Um, and I've personally, because I still work as a per diem nurse in um, an ER where we get adult and kids, Yeah. and I've personally used it still to put IVs in. Uh, my favorite place to use them are for people with very difficult access or in their fingers um, Yeah. for adult nurses. But um, I don't market it that way because it is misleading. The anatomy Yeah. plays a big role in how successful this tool is. And if Okay. I market it that it's good for this population and you have a low success rate, it's, it just comes off very misleading Sure, for those. sure. Yeah, Yeah, very you want specialized to stick to, in kiddos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. for sure. So like when you use it, do you, do you, cause I remember that when we were looking at Val's hand, we were like using it underneath. Like, how Uh do you like, are you like holding it with one hand or like, how do you normally set it up to start the IV? Okay. -huh. Yeah, so there's um a we actually have a training video on the website that walks you through the steps. Um every firefly when one's purchased Uh, comes with the badge buddy that has the QR code on it, actually. And we actually have stickers with the QR code that we designed for your pediatric crash cards. So you can just stick it on there. So anyone who has to put an IV in a kiddo can just scan it on their phone Oh, that's and it cool. pulls up the video. Yeah, so that'll show, I mean, it's a little bit more visual, but I actually have um, it with me here so I can show Nice. you. So the way it would work, actually, let me just grab my uh, baby real quick. <laughs> okay. I have, you remember Sadie from... Vegas. Yes, I remember So we have Sadie our, our from little, the, yeah, from Val the was movies. like, what is that? There, it's still the cutest photo of Travis Conn, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> But, but anyway, so the way this would work is um, you would just place this under the baby's hand. And yeah, so with one hand, it's going to be really hard to do this with the camera angle. But yeah, so you'll, with one hand, you'll kind of hold it. Um, it has to go pretty firmly against the baby's hand. And then you wrap your fingers around and then it'll illuminate from below. Um, the video has a really good angle because we have it on a tripod, but um, the hands are like my go-to for the kiddos. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you'll put it under the uh, palm of the hand, wrap their fingers around it, and kind of flex their wrist. That kind of controls a lot of Gotcha, the baby gotcha. fat, which is Yeah. a big problem when you're putting IVs in um, those real small kiddos. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it works. And it does work for the feet and for the ACs. It's very... Uh, dependent on the size of the kid because the anatomy makes a big difference obviously if you're looking trying to shine through a thicker part of the body it's going to make a big difference on how well it shines Yeah. through so hands and feet are like the real go-to's Gotcha. That makes yeah total sense. Very cool. Well, I want to get into the process of like, you know, how the, how the, how it was created from like, you know, idea to, sure to final product, because I feel like I've had, I definitely have had ideas where I'm like, oh, this would, you know, improve my practice so well. And I, but I never actually, you know, it never comes to fruition because I don't even know where to start. So can you just walk me through the process of developing Firefly, like Sure. from initial idea to like where you're at today? And that Yeah. might take a while, but you know, we Yeah, have a while. we're going to we're going to hit the cliff notes <laughs> because this is a so yeah. <laughs> this idea um I kind of had this idea I took that first job in this like mixed ER, this new mixed ER back in March of 2020. So it was Okay. a very interesting learning curve for me as a pediatric nurse um because I went there as their ped specialist was teaching a lot of uh, ped skills and things like that. Uh, but I was also learning about adults at the same time. And then COVID Yeah. happened. So it was like a very wild learning curve for me personally. But um, so when I got there, we had this um, a little, I was like, I think it was like my second or third day of orientation. And they had a pretty sick looking kiddo um, Mm. that, you know, if anyone who's worked adult ER knows that when there's a sick kid, Um, people aren't just, they're just not used to having sick kiddos. So I was on my orientation. I was pretty new. I mean, it was like my second or third day or, or within the first week or two. I can't exactly remember because it's quite a while ago. It's back in 2020. But I remember there's a, a, a rather sick kid in the room and there's a ton of people in there because, you know, when you're not used to something and, you know, you're getting a lot of hands on and this kid was actually pretty sick. Um, and I had, there's a bunch of nurses in there and I can just tell from like walking by and seeing like the approach was way off on how they were going to go about getting the IV in this kid. And so I told my priest, like, hey, is it cool if I, like, hop in there and just take a look at what's going on? And she's like, oh, yeah, you're a peds nurse. Like, and so she introduced me to the nurses who were in there. And I was like, do you mind if I take a look? And I had this, um, like, little keychain flashlight that um, a friend of mine gave me a long time ago. It was like, if you ever don't have a transluminary, you can just use this keychain. And so... I had it in my pocket and so I walked in and asked them to turn the lights off and people were very confused. Like we would turn the lights off. We need to get IV in this kid. Like, no, <laughs> yeah. trust me. 
It was, yeah. it was one of those moments where like I'll explain it later type thing because the kid yeah, was yeah. sick. And turned lights off and and had the this little flashlight under the the baby's hand and had a great vein and so got the IV you know within seconds and and awesome. it was just. For me, it was like it was almost a little bit comical because you have these like amazing nurses. These nurses are great. Yeah, but they've never not seen their real house. Before. Yeah, and it was just like they were just amazed, and people were like, "What is that? Like, how? Did, like, what did you do?" And, <laughs> and um, kind of gave me a little bit of, I guess, credibility coming in there as a new guy who you know, feeds background. Yeah. Uh, but over the course of the next couple months, um, I started teaching people with this, but the problem with the light was that I needed to modify it. So I ended up buying a couple of different ones, trying to find one that was a little bit um, like a flat version so that it's easier to hold because this one, the light was at the end. Sure, sure. And so I bought a couple of different versions on, on Amazon and was playing with them and I actually like took this one apart and drilled holes in it and like bent the light and it worked out great. And so I was able to teach in this department a bunch of people how to put IVs in using this like modified keychain. Yeah. And um, I ended up, I even made like a PowerPoint and like taught a, a little class to help out. But over the course of the next few months, I had uh, multiple nurses, like I'm talking about probably over 20 nurses come up to me like, hey, can you make me one of those flashlights? Uh, I saw someone use so it the cool. other day. It's amazing. And, you know, we're getting our IVs on first attempt. I'm like, yeah, definitely. And I was just, you know, whatever it costs to order it online and modify to just, you know, no, just buy them, give them to the nurses to help, yeah. you know. And it really made a difference. It was really decreasing delays in care and like increasing the success rate. Yeah. And then after a while, it like dawned on me like, man, I think I might be onto something. Like if you can make a commercially produced product that is of good quality and that's like very specific to kids, yeah. um, this could really change nursing for pediatrics, especially in adult ER. Um, and that's what kind of inspired me. And um, And yeah, and so that was like what sparked the idea. And then... Um, it seemed like a very, very simple process, but um, once we kind of, once I started researching what it takes to do something like this, I realized like, oh, wow, this is not as easy as I was anticipating. Yeah. So where do you go from there? I mean, who, like, yeah, what's your next step after you're like, okay, I want to, I want to go forward with this. Like, do you contact yeah, so, like a develop, like engineers or like, yeah, how does that work? Kind of. So um, the first part was like, Having the idea, like, okay, this could work. And so I have a background in business, like, as you mentioned mm -hmm. in the intro, like I, I worked in marketing, I studied marketing um, yeah. down in San Diego. And so I know that there's a lot of research, you know, that needs to be done for something like this. Yeah. And so as I started looking into this more and more, I'm like, oh, wow, this is complicated. You know, I, it's, oh, it, there's a big appreciation for like people who make products because it is insane, a very simple product, what yeah. it takes to create. And not only that, I started researching medical devices and like federal yeah. regulations and all these like certifications you have to have. And I realized this is going to be extremely time consuming. Um, yeah. Still didn't quite, I still was underestimating how much it was going to cost. But um, I was like, I need someone to help me with this. Someone I can trust, you know, someone who can help navigate all these like avenues of creating a product. Sure. And so one of my best friends, Evan, who's the co-founder of Firefly, um, who's also peds er travel nurse and you know we're friends we surf climb together uh, we end up we, after this we travel nurse together for a while and oh, so i kind of pitched the idea to him like dude what's your experience as travel nurse going to hospitals with having the availability of transluminators and i kind of like ran this idea by him he's like yeah i think that could actually work and so yeah uh, we had the idea and then we did nothing with it for uh, quite a while we, <laughs> we uh, <laughs> you know we were still just talked about it and like played with it, but we didn't really know where to start. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it wasn't really until probably six months later after I had talked to him about it, that we actually started getting down and like diving into the workload of it. And so, okay. Um, the first thing we really want to do is like as pediatric nurses, because this isn't, this technology has been around for a very long time. There's a bunch of variations of these types of devices. Yeah. Um, if there's any peds nurse out there, like they know that there's a bunch of different ones, but all of them kind of have flaws in the way they're designed. Mm. So Evan and I really wanted to focus on like, what do we want out of a product that's going to be very, very specific to the population we're going to use it for, for these kiddos. Okay. And so that's where we started like brainstorming all of the different things that we really wanted out of it. And that's how we like came up with the design portion. Okay. And, um, so 
for nurses out there who have used these types of devices. Um, I, I'm, I will never like mention names of other products because I don't want to say anything negative about any other company that's trying to help kids. Mm-hmm. But uh, just for some examples of designs that we wanted to improve on, is some of the products are very bulky. And when you're mm-hmm. working with small kids, it really you really have to manipulate the anatomy. You have to get it to fit under their hand or their yeah. foot. And you know when you're working with small babies, the smaller, the better. And there yeah. are some really good products out there that are really small that connect with wires to a battery pack. And so for the purpose of being small, it's great. But when you're working with a wire, as you're manipulating the baby's hands or feet, um, those wires start to get bent and they start to fray. So we knew we wanted wireless. We wanted mm-hmm. it small enough to fit under um, the extremities of the kiddos. And then we started thinking of other like safety features. Sure. So um, one big thing we did um, is we started researching all the as many of the existing products as we can think of um, looking at reviews mostly and not necessarily like the five star reviews. We want to know what are the one star reviews? Mm-hmm. What are people not happy with in these right. products? And we have previously used a ton of them. We've you know purchased some like when we were developing the product, trying to see what we can improve on. <clears throat> and so um, a big part of it was finding out what, were the issues with the other ones and improving those and then kind of bringing our own ex- clinical experience to really bring out in our opinion, like the best possible product yeah. that nurses can use. So that's part of like, you know, the development before even going to production is doing that research of figuring out what's already out there. What do people not like about it? Like what? Yeah. Like how exactly. can we build a product that's better than you know, what's already in market. Yeah, exactly. And, and from our clinical experience, you know, when we first started this, we had combined over 10 years or so of experience of ER nursing. So um, we had the clinical experience to know what were some downfalls of other products mm-hmm. and what we, what we would like in a product that are missing. But it was also like really, it, it sparked a lot of ideas on like, let's review the other ones. So like, for instance, one of them that, Neither one of us have ever used, but it is very quite popular actually on Amazon. Um, has a lot of reviews, a lot of um, sales, but a lot of consistencies we saw in it that it, the light creates heat and that patients were getting burned. Oh. And so yeah. that was a huge thing for us. Like, you know, not only from like a liability standpoint from a company, but, you know, you want a product that's not going to harm someone you're trying to help. Right. It's, yeah. Like, that sparked our interest on our like product development idea was like, let's put a thermal sensor in there, like mm. have it paired into there. So if it detects heat, it turns it off to protect the baby's skin. Sure, sure. So that was like on our list of things that we wanted very specifically incorporated in our product. Okay. Um, and, you know, and then we, we also another thing that was really common in kiddos that when you're putting IVs in sick babies, they're diaphoretic, they're super sweaty, like the lights slip and it's always right when you're about to put the needle in it slips and you lose vision of your, your, of your vein. Yeah. And so we um, created this kind of fun um, uh, feature that we have our patent, our design patent that's um, pending is uh, this studded surface. Oh uh, yeah. Thing. So those little studs that we created on here um, were really designed to create traction for the yeah. kids so when they're sweaty. It actually doesn't prevent it from slipping. And it's cool. kind of cool when you read the reviews online and people mention it like, Oh, it's so cool. It doesn't slip when the babies are sweaty. It's like, that's exactly what we designed. It for. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that was an idea that we had as well. And then, um, you know, being kind of hippie surfers and climbers, we want to make the world a better place. So rechargeable battery was really important to us instead of having nice. to use. So, um, which makes ours kind of unique is the, the, um, reusable battery. So that was something that was really important to us. And then, um, one other thing that we were really trying to do is like we want a wide range of kids we can use it on. So we added multi-lumen settings. So you're mm-hmm. not just one setting might not be bright enough for one kid or too bright for like NICU kiddos. So okay. we have four settings. That was, so all these were just part of the product development part. Okay. It's gotcha. What we need out of a, a product. Yeah. So you have all of these. So you have, you know, an idea of what you want. Do you then, you know create a markup of what you think that it's going to look like or do you take that to like a developer or an engineer or something like you know what's the next step after that sure. yeah so the probably the the two most important steps was first one was 
we needed to build a like a digital idea, like a uh, yeah, like a markup more or less okay. of what we wanted. So we got on the computer. We spent a lot of time at the library in Golden, Colorado. So we're kind of we were on travel contracts out in Colorado. Nice. Spent a lot of time there in the library, like troubleshooting, like drawing out what we think we should do. And you know, I'm like, we're playing with these ideas, and we're getting them on the computer and getting like a digital copy. Okay. Um, so that was quite important to like have it broken down what we want. And then the, all those specific details we just talked about mm -hmm. to lay out. But I think the most important part is, um, is actually getting the patent application in because the way the patent okay. boards work, um, once you publicly disclose your idea, um, there's a very like strict time frame from when you have to apply for the patent. Mm. And so before we can even bring this idea to engineers, um, we needed to get the patent application in because it's okay. time stamped. So if anyone tries to apply for a similar, um, like ours is a design patent that we have um, in a very, very, it's a very long process. Mm. Like, um, what's so. the, what's the time frame? It can like, take years. Um, oh, okay. yeah. But, yeah. Um, but it's very specific when you apply that it's time stamped. So if anyone puts in an, another application behind you, it'll run through their data check and if it's too similar, they will get denied because we were the first one with that design. Oh, okay. Um, but the patent boards are like one thing that's that we weren't anticipating. Like we have, um, you know, the one the design patent for the product itself, and then two trademarks, um, registered trademarks that are actually already approved. But um, okay. those platforms are so old like they're so outdated and mm. you put in your application and you hear nothing for like 11 months and then they tell you all the things that are wrong and then you go to correct it and then it's months before you hear back and so wow um and you can hire like patent lawyers and which is a great because it, these systems are really hard to navigate but they are insanely expensive yeah hire someone so uh, we consulted with some lawyer friends and they were like, yeah, we think you can do this on your own, but it's going to be, it's going to be challenging. <laughs> so. so when you make, when you apply for the patent, that starts the clock. It starts like, um, yeah. So you have the way it works. Once you apply, you have one year from that date to finish the application mm -hmm. and then it goes, and then it goes into review. And okay. then that's the review process is, you know, we submitted all the paperwork and then they get back to you at their convenience, we'll say. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's what I was like, okay, like if there's like a year to finish the patent or, you know, and then they don't get back to you for like 11 months and then yeah. like. It, it's the year to finish the actual, like submit think... your final thing for review. And then okay. it starts going into all the things that are wrong with it. Okay. And then, and they don't just tell you all at once. It's like this one piece is wrong. And then you like do all the paperwork to fix it. And then, you know, six weeks later, this other piece is wrong. It's just a very, very, like, time-consuming process. And I'm sure, like, for a patent lawyer who knows, like, all the details, they, they probably get it right the first time, but we're, like, two peds nurses trying to navigate this yeah. crazy system. Right. Uh, so that was a big challenge. So, yeah, and then from there, um, we take this idea and reach out to um, uh, electrical um, the computer engineers and electrical engineers, someone who can actually bring this thing to life. Okay. Um, which was probably the most discouraging part of the entire process. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> so were uh, they like, in what way were they like, this isn't going to work for like X, Y, and Z? No. So, um, it's being a little guy in a very big industry mm. is very hard. You know, you, we had a lot of these engineer, but you, you either hear nothing back at all. Um, or they'll be like, okay, cool. Yeah, we can set up a time and like discuss your idea, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have these meetings and we're like trying to be prepared. We have like, you know, tell them like our ideas and whatever and how very specific. Like, all right, cool. Let's like ass assess this and we'll get back to you. Or they're like, okay, cool. Like, what type of volume are you thinking? And, you know, being new guys, like, yeah, we were small company. Like, yeah, we don't take on, like, we like your idea. We think it's cool. Yeah. But what's your plan on doing like, millions of dollars in volume you're not worth our time it was wow. like a very common thing um people mm. are like unless you're doing like lots like hundreds of thousands of tens of thousands of volume or millions of dollars of volume they're like yeah, yeah this is cool I, I wish you guys luck but it's too small for us 
And it was months before we found someone who was willing to like give us a chance. Oh my god! And at the at the time, what was what was the volume that you were trying to achieve, or what seemed attainable for you guys? We, we didn't even really know. I mean, we like part of it was just we wanted to get this thing developed, like get yeah. at least get a prototype, and then at this point, still we're still like very naive. You know, we're like a couple of nurses that saw a, a need to improve the market, and um. And we weren't thinking it was going to be very expensive. We we're like, yeah, this is like, it's a simple, it's a very yeah, simple. It's like you know, a little, like, yeah, yeah, how not going to be? Create an MRI, you know, it's like, it's a simple. But yeah. um, we we very underestimated. And when we talked to engineers, like kind of told them like our ideal budget, they kind of like, yeah, that's so far from realistic. Oh um, if you want to work with us, this is like our rate. And this is what it's going to cost just to develop a prototype. And wow. that's when we kind of really realized like, wow, this is. Um, something that's going to be far more drawn out and more um, expensive than we anticipated, but we believed in it enough that we're like, we're going for it. Like we're going to yeah. take it day by day. And, and so, um, yeah, we were able to find a, a company to take us on. Did you need to get a uh, sponsor or like, how did you come up with those funds in order to, to hire the, engineer yeah so luckily evan and i were both travel nursing at the time um, yeah and uh, i believe i was listening to your podcast recently about you know like travel nursing making money and like investing and yeah uh, and so for us this was like an opportunity like we were working during kind of like as any other traveler out there knows like it was like peak um rates and yeah. so we just kept taking like trying to find contracts that were you know really high rates and we were just reinvesting all that money into the company and because it was a rather slow process to get this thing made. It really yeah. spread out the time where we were able to self fund um, the development of Firefly awesome. all the way up until the production launch, uh, the product launch. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so great. That's yeah. congrats it, on doing that. I can't, yeah. that's, that's amazing that you, you guys really like from the ground up is from the yeah. two of you. And it was kind of, we, we kind of flirted with the idea of like bringing on investors, but yeah, I don't know, for investors, us, we, that's what I was, sponsors, yeah. Yeah, uh, we were, like, playing with the ideas, but I don't know, we, we really, we have a lot of values that we want with it. Like, we don't want to compromise quality um, yeah. to, for profit, which is, you know, a lot of companies will, you know, we take a lot of pride um, when we were developing it because we wanted an American-made product. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, you know, with big companies and investors, like, it's, you know, you want to make it as cheap as possible and make a profit margin, you know? Mm -hmm. And for us, it was, we really wanted to make an American made product. We wanted high quality. We wanted to, we wanted it done a certain way and we didn't want to compromise any of that. Yeah. And so we were just going with it and making it work and, and, uh, and yeah, made it all the way to the launch. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay. So you made the prototype with this, you found a company that would, that would take you guys on. How long did that process take to actually create the first product? Yeah. So, um, about nine months, I believe, or so <clears throat> it's really, yeah, it's, it's hard to like really explain. So you don't really understand how many issues there are in developing a product until you're doing it. So, um, the engineering of the product, you know, they the engineers that took us on, they, they seem to be a pretty new firm. They all had a ton of experience, but they look like they created their own engineering firm like rather recently based on like their website and stuff like that. Okay. So they, I think it looked for them was like an opportunity to take on a new project for their portfolio and sure. you know, they did a great job, but the, I have such appreciation for people who make electronics because to develop something that's even as simple as a, you know, a specialized light, there's a lot of like development that goes into it. And um, another big issue was because this was right after COVID, um, supply chains, mm. getting parts for electronics was extremely difficult. Um, there's global shortage of electronic components, global yeah. shortage, of, like um, the little things that make the microchips. And so yeah, you, know, okay. you can have 99% of your tools with that one microchip that's out of stock globally stops your production. Yeah, um, it's just a it's, waiting game. It is a waiting, it's a big waiting game. And the problem is, you know, um, you have huge companies, you know, you gotta think of like big companies that make electric cars and computers, they all need these same little components. And so as soon as they're available, you know, we'll find on the website that there's 
a hundred thousand of these chips available and then you go to like place your order for you know your thousand units <laughs> and they're completely gone oh within, within minutes and Jeez. so it's a constant like case of getting the parts you need so that ran into a lot of delays wow, but um, okay. it's kind of funny so we actually got the first prototype the day before TravCon last year, or two days before TravCon last year. Oh, wow. And we had the actual, like, physical what the final Firefly was going to be like. So we ran through a bunch of variations of prototypes. Yeah. Um, that were either too big or, like, things about it we didn't like. So we had to keep, you know, getting one and trying it. And, like, no, we don't like it. Switch this, switch that. Okay. Uh, but we got it two days before TravCon last year, which is where we first publicly announced um, Firefly. That's so cool. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I didn't know TravCon had that significance for you guys. Oh, yeah, last cool. year, um, not this one, but they went before, and no one, ever, even a lot of people didn't even know we were there. We had like last minute booked a booth, and we were like the back corner. So if you got lost, you found us. But that, you know, yeah, we were, we were very small back then. <laughs> <laughs> so how many prototypes did you go through before you were like, "This is the one"? We went through. Um, Physical prototypes, I think we had three, but mm -hmm. a bunch of digital markups of maybe like five to six or so. Okay. Um, that the engineers like put together and like, no, make it smaller or switch this feature because the original size of the prototype that they sent us was quite a bit wider than what we have now. Mm. And we like took it apart and like, no, nope, it looks like those rooms you can squeeze things in. Like, you need to make this smaller. <laughs> smaller yeah. Right? And then, <laughs> Then you run into the problem like, okay, well, if you want it smaller, we have to find new batteries that have enough power to power the lumens you want. Mm -hmm. And so there's like all this, like, you know, you're taking away, you're making it smaller, but then you have to compromise, like, what type of battery can use that are still, you know, that have sure. credibility, you know, they're certified batteries. So there's, it's a lot of like, you make one sacrifice to make up for something different. Yeah. It's a lot of balancing out. And it's, it's very complicated. And just, just like knowing, you know, having the background and the the confidence to be like, no, I think that we can do this. I think that we can like, yeah. you know, and, do and this a certain way. That's a big part of it, though. You you kind of like you don't you don't you can't you're not going to be rude, but you have to be very assertive because, yeah. you know, you're working with these engineers who they're they're engineers. I have such appreciation for engineers. They're so smart, but their mind is like the getting the functionality of it but they don't understand the clinical application sure sure and a lot of it's like no this is the way it's gonna it needs to work to me i'm like no we're telling you like if you make it this size it's not going to be clinically practical right find a way to make it smaller yeah and it's like you have to have that little bit of being assertive to make sure that you're getting the clinical application that you need out of it yeah you have to advocate for your product yeah. yeah exactly and there was a lot of not a lot of that but a, a decent amount where it was a lot of like hey no like and you have to like justify why you want them to make these kind of rather difficult changes. Yeah. And then once you do like, oh, okay, that, that makes sense. And so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if there's the, there's the clinical, you know, significance of it, it's not just like, yeah, it's not what I envisioned. I mean, there's, you know, maybe a little bit of that too, but the fact that like it has to serve a clinical purpose, these are very, for tiny exactly. little hands, you know? Yeah. And there, and there's, it's definitely quite, not quite a bit different, but it's, it is, very different um, design than what we had originally thought it would be, but it mm. follows all the priority like aspects of it that we wanted. Yeah, so there was definitely some sacrifice on like the, the way it looks now, but it absolutely amazing. The, yeah. it came out awesome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so okay, so once you found you know a a year ago, you have the product. So where do you go from there? How do you how do you expand it? Yeah, so um, marketing is huge. I mean, yeah, it's a you know a multi billion dollar industry for a reason, and so mm -hmm. a lot of it is um, you know finding how to market it. And so a big part of it was when we were coming up with like what to call it. You know, we needed something that was like pediatric friendly. We wanted like a modern design. Um, we wanted something that people can refer to, like like brand recognition. You know, like when you say. Yeah. You don't say get the ice chest. You say like get the whatever the name brand of it is. Yeah, you know, it's like brand recognition. So we want some people would refer to it as like, hey, who has the Firefly? And that and the, yeah. fire, the idea of Firefly to me was just like it was so catchy. Yeah, and it's, like, speed's friendly. It's like you it know, is. The logo, yeah, the logo came out great. Um, and so, so yeah, so a big part of it was marketing, and a lot of it um, 
it's it's really challenging me the new guy you know we're out there competing with these huge brands and we're just like two nurses who had an idea and you're like you're you're trying to show people that this product's going to work but you don't ha- even have the product available like it's never been used other yeah. than like our demos right. and so we're like yeah we're confident this is going to work but we have nothing to prove like nothing to show <laughs> it's not available yet and yeah. so it's a lot of um education education is probably the biggest part about it you know we've done i've done probably eight or nine conferences in the past year mm. all over the country to like with the demo babies and um, actually showing nurses yeah. um, how this type of technology works. So a lot of it is education and then um, just getting the name out there with, you know, social media and um, the branding, you know, going, giving, you know, giveaway stuff at conferences and things like that that help um, really get the name out. So marketing is a huge part of it, but yeah. the hard part was getting people to trust you um, in clinical practice with, a product that has not that has no credibility yet right yeah That's so you, did you guys start out at just the facilities that you were working at with the lights yeah so i mean we had the prototypes and we had a handful of like close friends that that helped us kind of like test them and mm-hmm. and we know we had all the all the regulations were covered the fcc's yeah. covered the fda and all that stuff to, so it's legally allowed to be used yeah but, um, you know, we're still fine-tuning the details of, of what the final product would be. We had to test them and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, so we actually just started creating a wait list. You know, from, a lot of it were from nurses that we worked with who saw our demo, who were like, oh, that's so cool. I wish I had one of those, you know, as a travel nurse or at, at the hospital. Yeah. And so there was a lot of wait lists from, like, friends of friends or, like, our friends and people we worked with. And then, you know, just from TravCon was the only place that we showed it. And had a bunch yeah. of people be on the wait list from Travcon. Cool. Um, and then from there, it's like, you know, people ordering them. And it's kind of interesting because you get, when we first launched the product, it did pretty well. It didn't, it wasn't as good as we were hoping. Like we had a long wait list and a fraction of people ordered. But there was mm-hmm. a lot of things that we needed to like figure out still. Like there's yeah. price points were an issue um, because we were making them in California. And for anyone mm-hmm. who knows about California, it's a very expensive place for business. Mm. And so, um, yeah, there's a lot of things that changed over the past year that really helped, I think, grow the business and especially more importantly, bring the price down for the consumers. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking it's as a traveler, it's, it's so nice when you can just do things on your own, you know, when you like you're on your own so often, you know, and like you really rely on your skills to get your job done, especially when you don't know the people around you. And so like, it's so nice probably to have this device that you can just, you know, it's like you have on your person that like, you know, it's not, it's not like something, a resource that you have to like find within the hospital. You just have it on you. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And that's um, another feedback we get. It's like, it's, you know, having that consistency because you go to different hospitals and yeah, sometimes they have them, but they have different variations. It's like, it's almost like learning a new skill, like even like, you know, putting IVs in when you use one catheter versus the other, it, it yeah. makes it a little bit more challenging because they're, right. they're, they feel different. They, they, they um, advance differently or whatever. Yeah. And so that's a good feedback we've had for people like to have your own tool that's consistent and reliable. You know, you're not depending on the hospital to provide one or it's missing or the battery's dead. Like you have it on you 24 seven eclipsed to your ID badge. And so people really like it for that. Yeah. Aspect. So when you had, you know, your orders are in, where do you go? Do you go to a manufacturing company and say like, hey, this is this is what I need. This is X amount that I need. Or do you like make them ahead of time and then sell them? Like, how does yeah. that work? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> it's a big leap of faith. You know, we, we had to pay up front for everything and we got a bulk amount okay. that were delivered to us. And then we packaged them. Um, most of this was when I was working as a travel nurse at this point when we did the product launch in Northern California. And so I was living in Santa Cruz. I had a super rad, uh, one bed, like a studio apartment, but it had a, um, a loft. And so the oh, loft nice. was actually like the distribution center. We had all the boxes up there and uh, <laughs> just stuff everywhere. It was just chaos. Yeah. We you know, were just, we didn't have any revenue to like rent a commercial space or to like, right people to help us we, we were just going off of an idea and you know a lot of confidence that we were going to do something positive in healthcare yeah 
And so that's kind of where it was. We were doing it out of like, just like any other startup company, you're doing it out of your house, out of your basement, your garage. Right. So that's what we were doing um, in the beginning phases. Um, and then we had a lot of like uh, corporate changes and restructuring um, in spring this year that mm. played a big role in the direction that we went as of now. Okay. Yeah. Like in, in what way? Um, so um, one big one that was a hard decision, but um, Evan decided to move on to um, different business adventures. So mm. I took over full ownership in spring of the company. Okay. Um, so once that happened, um, I really believe that one of the big things that was going to hold back the company was staying in California. And mm. I'm born and raised Southern California, like ho- love surfing, I live on the beach, you know, type yeah. lifestyle. So it was a really hard decision Big to leave change. California. Yeah. But once um, we did the change of ownership earlier this year, um, I knew that was going to be a huge step to like really see this thing through. And so um, I sold my house and packed up my car and drove east and left in April and um, made it to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh, and now I live wow. here. But um big part was moving manufacturing too. You know, by by moving manufacturing mm-hmm. out of California, we moved uh, to two different manufacturers in Michigan, um, okay. was huge on the cost of production. And okay. so we were actually able to reduce the price of Firefly by forwarding those savings onto the consumer. And not only awesome. did we um, lower the cost of production, but we actually got um, a better quality manufacturer because the manufacturers I'm using now are very, they're specifically uh, medical device manufacturers. So they actually have the highest federal standard, which is the ISO 1345 certification that they have to get um, renewed every year in order to maintain making medical devices. So not only are we making a safer, a higher quality product, but we were able to forward those savings onto the consumer by getting the price point down. um, Oh, that's awesome. Actually. Yeah. And you guys just came out with a, in, or I guess, well, right now it's beginning of November, but I think this episode will come out either, I think, beginning of the year. What's happening in December? Yeah, so um, over we, so we exhibited in TravCon. We shut down the company for a couple months where we worked on like the corporate restructuring with the, mm-hmm. the change of ownership, the change of manufacturers. And then reopened a few months later in spring, but actually completely sold out um, in by June of this past year. So we were actually only on the market for about five months before completely selling out of Firefly, uh, which was super exciting. Um, And even more exciting is that we had um, no returns. Like people got the product they liked. We have exchanges um, and we had one return actually, let me correct myself. We had one return because the nurse manager said they're not allowed to use an outside product. And so they asked to return Mm -hmm. it and we did. But um, uh, we had, I wouldn't say a lot, but a, a, more exchanges than I was um, happy with. So there was a couple of things that needed improvement um, in the design of the first model. And mm-hmm. so I decided um, instead of producing more of the same product, um, I decided to develop Firefly 2.0. So we actually have the new model coming out um, in December. And awesome. so it's been months of development, months of um, new designing. Um, it's been an extremely difficult process. Not only that, but when you're corporately changing your company from one state to another, there's so many logistical things that have to be changed before you can put a product on the market. Yeah. It's caused a lot of delays. Yeah. Uh, is there, you know, when you, when you have to revamp a, a product, how many steps back does that take you? Like, do you have to go back to, you know, the patent stage? Do you have to go to like, you know, the same engineers and be like, you know, we want to revisit it this way? Or is it like part of the manufacturer? Like where, you know? Yeah, so it's a mixture of everything. So, um, you know, the electronics are designed by our engineers in California. And so even though we have them uh, manufactured somewhere different, we did have to, I did have to rehire them to kind of um, design the software that's compatible with the new manufacturer. So it was a little okay. bit of like uh, engineering changes, but it doesn't change the function of the product. Okay. Um, but when it comes down to actually manufacturing the changes on the product, that was a huge process. It's um, you're trying to, I don't, I don't know how to say it. It's like trying to <clears throat> redesign features on the existing equipment. Yeah. Um, and it's actually really when you're injection molding, it's this, 
huge like solid steel thing that you're trying to like modify to make your changes and we were successfully able to do it with a lot of patience and get it to correct some of these changes that we wanted by using some of the existing equipment and then we actually just made our own like new equipment for some of the other components gotcha Uh, yeah so it's a lot of um a lot more engineering um you know going back and forth with the designers and engineers and trial and error type thing gotcha okay So the fireflies that are that are now out there in the world, are you getting, you know, data coming back about like, you know, you know how how are you measure measuring the success of the product or, you know, like is there any like, you know, like patient, you know, how how are you able to like observe the impact, I guess, for patients? Yeah, so I actually had this um so let me just like backtrack a bit. So like when you're at a conference exhibiting, you're really catering how you're explaining this to who you're talking to. So I'm talking to bedside nurse. They want to know about the clinical application. When mm-hmm. I'm talking to managers and educators. They're asking the same questions. How do we know this works? Yeah. How do we know it's safe? Yeah. And so I found myself at multiple conferences like, oh, yeah, you can go to our website. And you can read all of our reviews. We have like almost 100 percent five star reviews. And it tells like nurses talk about their experience with Firefly. Mm -hmm. But then I started thinking like, you know, just like anything else in in medicine, it has to be evidence-based. It has to be like proven. And so like, no matter how you read or like dissect this, these reviews, they're still subjective. It's me as a nurse telling you, I like a product, but it doesn't tell me in any type of objective way that this thing makes a difference in patient care. Right. So that sparked my idea to actually um, start a clinical study which has been going on now for a couple months. All You're over the doing country. it all. This is just, <laughs> it just keeps going. I'm yeah, just like, so, have a lot of like pride for you, Adam. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, trust me, it, it sounds cool now talking about it, but you know, you talked to us you know, a year ago. It, it was just, it's just very, a lot of disappointment, a lot of dead in the streets. But once it starts, you're getting some credibility and you're getting a lot more things. So um, I realized like we need something objective. Yeah. And so um, our Instagram page is pretty active. We have a lot of people on there. A lot of people send their photos. It's kind of a fun place. Cool. Um, and so I posted on there just like, let me just throw this out there and see if anyone would be interested in like participating in this study. And so I posted something on Instagram. like, Hey, we're looking for some nurses to volunteer on a clinical study. You know, check out our website. There's an application page with the details. And in 24 hours, I had 100 people apply. They wanted to participate ah. in the study. That's awesome. And so it was really cool. So the way I broke down the study was um, very, I wanted not only like pediatric nurses, but I wanted like multiple disciplines, multiple locations. Um, So I had like a questionnaire that they would fill out on like their clinical experience, you know, um, what specialty they work in, if they're board certified, you know, um, how many years they've been a nurse, things like that to Mm -hmm. really get like a good understanding. And, And for me, it was not so much about like how successful is firefly i was actually more concerned in like where are we not having success where can we improve in the product or which population can we improve on Mm -hmm. to really make a change in the way nurses approach their ivs and babies like so the way the study is broken down from like the nursing perspective it's like their years of experience what specialty um what level of education you know things like that um and so on the patient side, it's, you know, obviously with HIPAA and things like that, you have to be very careful, like how you collect data. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's no patient identifiers, nothing, anything right. can track this back. But the main things I'm looking at are the age of the patient, their mm-hmm. weight, um, their ethnicity, and their um, IV locations. So mm-hmm. the reason I chose those is because sometimes you have those real, like, small preemie babies that are really thin Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes you have those really chunky, you know, 15 month old kiddos that, mm-hmm. um, that you're putting IVs in. Sometimes you have like really dark skin kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I'm trying to find is like, where are we having consistencies in missed IVs? Are yeah. we having consistencies in our dark skin kiddos? Are we mm-hmm. having consistency in our like chunky babies or our real small preemies? So yeah. that way we can focus on like, is there something we can make a way to, to alter the product to fit those populations better? But more importantly, is there a way we can educate better to like yeah. educate nurses who are having consistency missed IVs in these populations of kiddos? Because um, I'm actually in the process right now, of, we're developing a, um, 
a education program. So I've had a lot of nurse managers around the country, all these conferences asking, do we teach? And yeah. I always said, not yet. It's something I want to do in the future. And this data is going to really help fine tune um, how we teach, like which IV locations are specific for weight ranges or yeah. things like that. And so once this data is done, I'm actually right now in the process of developing the training program where hospitals can hire Firefly and you'll get pediatric nurses to come to your ER or come to your new grad program or come to your fire station yeah. and teach your nurses or your firefighters or your paramedics or whoever uh, very, very specific PED skills and right. not just on like putting IVs in, but how to assess a kid, you know, patient, uh, the pediatric assessment triangle, um, your family centered care, how to involve the family in the care. Mm -hmm. um, age appropriate communication with kids, you know, how to talk to a toddler different than a school age kid or a teenager yeah. um, to really bring an overall, not just success in putting the IV in, but have an overall positive experience for the patients and the family. Right. Because yeah. that, that ties into, you know, your inspiration in the first place is just people's, you know, they weren't familiar with the process and they weren't, you know, comfortable with the process. And yeah. it's not just the skill of, you know, finding the vein and putting it in, but it's, yeah, it's about the whole experience. Yeah, exactly. And and that was part of the inspiration to create the training program is like, yeah, you know, I've exhibited at, you know, the pediatric specific conferences and TravCon, but mm -hmm. um, I find like, some of the people who are most eager to learn are at the ENA conferences. You know, I've been, I was going to say you went to ENA right after Travcon, yeah, right? Yeah, How did yeah, that? Yeah. I'm sure people were loving on the booth. Uh, it was great. <laughs> I physically was not great. I was so worn out from oh, Travcon. My right. voice was yeah. gone. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no. and I went straight from Vegas. This next day, I flew straight to San Diego and set up the booth for the next conference. We were there for three days exhibiting. Oh. Uh, but it was good. It was really well. And that was the, the national conference, which is the target market of nurses from all over the country. Yeah. But, um, what inspired me to create a training program that we can go and teach at hospitals um, was that the adult nurses are so eager to learn. You know, we get every booth, every time I exhibit, we have people stacked up at the booth. I mean, yeah. you probably saw at Travcon, how many people were just at the booth all yeah. day long. They're eager to learn. You know, this is a skill that's, um, difficult for them. It's right. a skill that's kind of intimidating. You know, you're working with a sick baby and you have the parents watching and mm -hmm. the doctors are in the rooms a lot of times when they're really sick. And, you know, you're on like, it's like your moment, like everything's focused on that six, the, the direction of care is dependent on that IV. Like you yeah. need to get your blood tests, you need to get antibiotics on, you need to get fluids. Everything yeah. is so dependent on that one skill. And you're like in the middle of the spotlight and it's very intimidating. So yeah. we're at these conferences, these nurses are stacking up at the booth. They're eager to learn and they, they're they so excited about taking Firefly back to their hospitals and trying. And yeah. then we get the reviews like saying how much has increased their success rates. And so that inspired me. Like if we can go and create this program where hospitals can hire us and we spend send nurses there, we can really change healthcare. Like we can change how IVs are placed in kids on a, like a national scale. If we can get yeah. a systematic way that's proven to work and more and more hospitals start using it, um, this can really change um, how like delays in care in kids. Yeah, I, uh, I, I see it. And it's, it's an exciting, you know, it's an exciting construct. And I'm just, I'm glad that, you know, there are people like you out there that can just run off of optimism and, you know, hope and see their vision, you know, put forth. It's, it's awesome. It, it's funny because like my, my friends, you know, they, they're, everyone's been super supportive of this, you know, from the beginning, but I always joke people like, man, if I can go back three years ago, I would never do this because it's like the, the <laughs> amount of like disappointment, the amount of like mistakes you make along the way, um, it's so, it's, it's so discouraging at times, but then you have to like, like, you know, like you said, like I have to stay focused on the reason why I did this, you know, yeah. I want to be um, a better experience for kids in hospitals. Yeah. I'm very passionate about working in pediatrics. And so, uh, yeah, so there are definitely days where I'm like, I, like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> even like today, you know, the, the company is building credibility. It's doing well, but there's some days where I just hit so many like problem, like, oh man, what did I get myself into? But you know, you gotta yeah. stay, stay focused. <laughs>
Yeah. Do you have any kind of, you know, takeaway advice for people that are, you know, they they want to put forth an idea, but they, you know, don't know where to start or. Yeah, um, definitely do a ton of research before um, going down any routes because uh, mistakes are costly. And we I, Evan and I learned this over you know the development of Firefly before the product launch. And then, you know, once I took over ownership, making changes to the existing model, um, mistakes are extremely costly and um, time consuming. And mm. so if there's any literature out there or any courses to take um, to help navigate, you know, there's a lot of resources out there on like patent boards and trademarks and FCC um, because those mistakes are extremely cost, uh, costly and time consuming. Um, and one of the things I'm working on, not it'll probably be later in the year, um, I'm actually going to be developing a, um, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Like we were talking about it earlier, so I just completely forgot. Um, the, like a training program? Yeah, well, not training program, but like consulting, that's the word. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so later next year, um, and probably not in the beginning because we're working on the 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 education portion, but towards the end of the year, I'm actually going to start developing a consulting um, like business opportunity for nurses who have ideas because there's so much room for improvement in healthcare especially yeah. with advances in technology and things like that. Um, the mistakes that we've made in Firefly and the even with the business background, the stuff I've learned over the past three years, if I would have known a fraction of this three years ago, we would have saved so much time and money and actually had a, probably a more efficient product in the beginning. Yeah. Or just even a more efficient way of making the product and having things done sure. at a quicker um quicker like time frame. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot and I get so many people who reach out to me like, hey, like, can you help me with this on my business? And I'm like, cool, yeah, like I can help you out. But then I realize like how time consuming it is. And um <clears throat> and you know it's not if if you can provide a service to help people save their time and money, it'll make a huge difference yeah. in this, their business. So that's something like I'm working with some other entrepreneurs who have also created successful business to actually uh, provide this service at some point. But that's right an idea for, for, for later. Uh, for later. <laughs> yeah, we have too much going on right now. Here. <laughs> yeah. But you're yeah. so right in that your experience is so valuable and you know, it, it would, you know, being able to streamline that process for other people would, would, you know, open up the market for, you know, nurses. And it is definitely a space where nurses are valued, you know, in order to improve like we are the eyes, we understand where the gaps are in healthcare. Oh, and, 100%. you know, like, it's so hard to envision doing something on the side that takes up so much time. But, you know, if we had a little bit more, you know, understanding of that process, at least it would seem attainable, you know? Sure. Yeah, definitely. And that's a big thing at conferences, you know, when like we're exhibiting, I have a couple nurses that um, work with me and a couple that like, friends of mine that volunteered to help when, you know, when I was back home in San Diego, they came and helped out. But um, when people realize that you're not a sales rep for the company, that you're actually a pediatric nurse, like your credibility just goes through the roof. Like, oh, wait, you actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. when you, you get nurses and managers to ask very specific questions. Yeah. And you can give answers like, oh, wait, these guys know what they're talking about. And so, <laughs> and I've met a lot of people, you know, over the past couple of years with the development of Firefly who are entrepreneurs because of their career in nursing they saw an education need or a better platform for finding contracts or whatever and yeah. um, that, that real life experience gives so much more credibility than some corporate guy who like sees a business opportunity because they don't understand the clinical application of things yeah, so, yeah. I know you had said earlier in the episode, or maybe we were talking about it beforehand I can't remember about you were just hiring employees. Are those other, like, is that for the education piece or is that part of the, like, development for Firefly? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> there's a lot of expansion going on right now. Um, I have a handful of reps that um, that I have that will go into 2024 um, helping with a lot of the events. And okay. then once we get the education part developed, um, I'll start interviewing nurses to um, be the reps to go to hospitals and teach 
And then um, I have employees starting this week because I actually am no longer working out of the loft in my apartment. We have an actual um, distribution center now in Tennessee. Yeah. So um, I've actually spent the last week um, putting it all together and getting all the final touches done. And then so I have uh, distribution reps who are not in healthcare. They have backgrounds in um, various distribution jobs and things like gotcha, that gotcha. that um, are going to bring a lot of value to the company because you know, they are also playing a huge role in patient care. I mean, they're going to make sure these products get out in a timely manner, any issues, um, yeah. they'll help, help solve them. And so they're a huge part of the process as well. And so um, we're going to start orientation on Thursday um, on just kind of like the expectation of, you know, all the, another thing, all the federal regulations for mailing electronics, there's actual regulations you have to follow and like oh ways of doing everything. So uh, we'll have orientation and then they'll start um, at the end of this week. And um, as we get closer to the product launch, we're uh, going to do the pre-sale for Firefly 2.0 coming up in the next week or so. And they'll be okay. um, distributed out in December. Um, unfortunately, even though we have spent months developing the new product, uh, it looks like we're going to be completely sold out in the first week because um, our wait list is, um, I think at like 130% more than what we're developing right now. Wow. Yeah, it's really exciting because <laughs> people have been anxiously waiting for the new product since June, since we sold out. Uh, but we are already working on um, acquiring all the parts we need for the batch. Um, we're starting the third batch. Uh, I just had a meeting with my engineers actually today and manufacturers. So we're going to start the next batch here um, next week as well. So That's that we cool. hopefully don't have this big of a gap, but it, it will be... Um, unfortunately out of stock rather quickly, but it's <laughs> yeah, the other thing we're trying to it's keep a good problem with. to have, right? It is, but it's also like the longer we're out of stock, like the longer those kids are having those delays in care, yeah. but um, we're working on a bunch of things to help um, expedite these processes. And, and um, it looks like we have it under control now. So yeah, the shorter durations until we can really keep up with demand. You're going to have to write a book, Adam, or something <laughs> on like, you know, how a nurse like emerged into nurse entrepreneur and like, you know, how that like your specific set of skills, like, you know, helped you through this process and all yeah. of the different. It would, it would be interesting. There'd be a lot of uh, you can go. I would go a lot into detail of the mistakes. I think that's the most important part of uh, entrepreneurship is like you have to be willing to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you have to like yeah. have the humility to like learn from that and not like, you know, yeah. like veer you off track that and yeah. just like stay focused. You lose a lot of sleep over these things because <laughs> I have so many nights where I wake up at like two or three in the morning with an idea or something that like a, an issue I haven't been able to solve and like, wait, this might work. And then I'm on my computer for like three hours. Oh, some, no. You know, it's in. Um, so it, when people talk about entrepreneurship, it's like a full commitment. It really is like it, it runs through every aspect of your life while yeah. you're trying to figure it out. But it's, it's, it's honestly very enjoyable though. I, I like it 95% of the time, just <laughs> 5% big issues that get really irritating, but. Well, you're it, certainly it, making a difference, you know, you're making a huge difference in impact and impacting care and, you know, your, your aspirations for you know extend to you know kids all over the world you know all over the it's it's an amazing insight yeah i mean it's really the nurses though it's the nurses who are taking the chance with the new guys you know we were, we were nobody a year ago that you know gave firefly a chance and they're the ones who are making the difference you know we are supplying a tool and helping them you know fine-tune their existing skills but they're the ones at bedside. They're the ones who are working with these sick kids. I mean, the credit really goes to them. We're just trying to make sure we have a safe tool to help them be successful. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Adam, thank you so much for coming on and talking about this with yeah. me today. So where can people find the product? Where can people find you? Let's plug Instagram and yeah. all of the yeah, you know, ventures. Yeah, everything's pretty simple. Um, Fireflyvainlight.com is the website um, where the product's available. Um, we, on the homepage, there's the, uh, wait list. You can put your email on there. Um, there's a bunch of tabs on there with the clinical study will be added soon. There's the videos that, uh, will help you can watch to how to approach your IVs. There's tons of information on the website and then same thing on Instagram. It's just Firefly Vein Light. Um, we have photos from all over the country and kind of a lot of updates go through there. Um, we also have Facebook and LinkedIn. Those are kind of in the developmental stages there. You know, they're, it's. <laughs> Um, if we find the Instagram 
way more active in a lot of aspects. So a lot more focus goes to that. But yeah, we have all rooms. Yeah, cool. All right, Adam. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, and I'm just excited to see where Firefly goes, and hopefully, I'll see you at Travcon next year. We'll be there. All right, take care. That brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in to Nursing Uncharted. To learn more about today's episode, make sure to explore the show notes at AmericanMobile.com slash Nursing Uncharted. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a guest. If you're a nurse interested in traveling, visit AmericanMobile.com to explore the largest database of travel nursing jobs in the industry and the amazing benefits that American Mobile has to offer. Also, a special thanks to producer Jonathan Carey, assistant producers Katie Schrauben and Sam McKay, and Aiden Dykes for the music and editing. Until next time, take care of yourself.